inside as we begin our selection show, the defending champs, the UMass Minutemen. Greg Carvel's boys got it done in Pittsburgh. They win the Hockey East Conference Championship last night with their win over UConn. They, of course, are back in the field. They'll have a chance to defend their trophy this year in Boston. Could be a slight home ice advantage if they can get to the Frozen Four, win their two games. Welcome in, John Butchergrass, Sean Richland, Dave Starman. Boys, the field of 16 is set. We're here to unveil it and just talk college hockey, right? It's a good Sounds time to great. just do that. So, again, the number one seeds, that's the first step in obviously determining the matchups and who will play where in our four regions across this great country of ours. And uh, to begin the show, let's unveil those uh, number one seeds now. And here we are, from left to right, from one through four, the seeds for this year's men's 2022 Ice Hockey Championship. Overall seed number one in Allentown, Michigan, Minnesota State, with that crazy CCHA win last night. They're in Albany. Western, W is for Western and Worcester. And then Denver in Colorado, not too far away from Denver they will begin to play. So boys, uh, that's the big four for now. Uh, what's your reaction, Sean? I think the teams that go as a one seed that win their tournament is always a huge positive thing when you go into it. So when I look at this going on right now, Dave, you see a couple good opportunities for those teams that have good vibes going into the tournament. There's no question. The other part of it is, is the teams that lose in their conference tournament that knew they were in anyway that come into the yeah. NCAA tournament now a little bit ornery, mm -hmm. which is why I think if you take a look at Western Michigan now playing in Worcester, like that to me is a very intriguing team. I thought they played well last night. They ran up against an absolute immovable object yeah. in Minnesota Duluth. But to me, Western Michigan's a team to keep an eye on. They are no longer surprising people. Mm -hmm. But you, if you take them lightly, if you overlook them, they're not the big pedigree team, but they're really, really good. Uh, they've been, tough. They've been fun to watch. The NCHC, huge wagon. Of course, Michigan, uh, number one overall seed. They win the Big Ten title last night. They go to Minneapolis. Uh, great crowd on hand. They beat the Gophers, and so they are your number one overall seed. And their first matchup, again, is against uh, American International. AIC, they win the Atlantic. Well, they're used to getting into the tournament. It's an older team that plays tough and heavy, and Eric Lang gets them going at the end of the year. I'm, ju I'm just happy for Langer. Langer played junior for me. I'm always, I love watching the Bronx. The, 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 that's right. Yeah. The Bronx. <laughs> I love watching his progression. Remember, it was his team that beat St. Cloud in that 16-1 matchup in Fargo a couple of years ago. Yeah, Eric's doing a great job in Springfield. The other matchup, Quinnipiac. Short ride for them yep. as they take on St. Cloud State. Sean, I was I thought St. Cloud State would come into this year off last year's team. They brought everyone back. Just quite haven't hit their A game yet. If they get hot though, watch out. Yeah, at the end of the year they kind of slowed down a little bit to what I think Coach Larson would have liked to see for their club, but they can play. They played a tough schedule all year in the NCHC. And you know without a doubt that they made it all the way to the run to the finals last year. Yeah. They're going to be ready to go. And as long as they're healthy and they can start cooking, they're going to be a tough out. You, you've seen them play. What, what's the issue with St. Cloud in terms of getting consistency throughout this year? Consistency in their lineup, I think, right. is the biggest issue yeah. they had between COVID and injuries and all kinds of stuff. But they brought back a veteran core. Mm -hmm. This is a really good team. Like, to me, they go to the Frozen Four, not shocked. They're really good. They can score. They're deep down the middle. Kevin Fitzgerald kind of powers that engine. He's been really good on faceoff. Great on special teams. They're solid in goal. Nick Perbix is as good as any defenseman in the country. I really like what St. Cloud State can do. The capabilities yeah. are there. Quinnipiac loses to Hartford last night in the ECAC final. They've been a strong unit all year long. We'll see how they can go up against St. Cloud State. Meanwhile, we move on now to the Albany Regional. Minnesota State, another fantastic year. They win last night 35-5. and Harvard with a late kick in this season. Uh, Matthew Coronado, slow start. He was lights out in the ECAC, the Calgary first-round pick, Harvard, Minnesota State. Well, you got one of the oldest teams in the country versus the youngest yeah. team in the country. Harvard has a very young squad. Coach Coronado has gotten them to play much better as they got towards the end of the year. And they almost all growing up right in front of your eyes the way they bat battled through the ECAC tournament. And Minnesota State, Coach Hastings, these guys every year. This is, this is an interesting year for them because they got a lot of older guys. They got terrific goaltending, and their leadership is as good as any leadership in the country. Oh, I, I agree. Jabuchi, strong. Yeah. Real strong, yeah. especially, especially in key areas. And then how about this? This is one of those. I think this is, you know, there's two really good first-round matchups, Dave. Um, to me, this is one of them. North Dakota, Notre Dame. I, this is a great matchup. I'll start with Notre Dame. I think they're a little undervalued in terms of how well they can play offensively. This mm -hmm. team, they can free will offensively. They're very good defensively. So from the net build outward, they're solid. Now let's just take a look at North Dakota. 
Brad Berry and his staff this year put together a master's class <laughs> in administrative leadership. 14 new faces, five grad transfers, so they had to convince the grad transfers to buy in on a one-year deal kind of thing like free agency, yep. and it all came together. Now they're going to be missing Jake Sanderson. That's yeah, a problem, but yeah. you know what? With Tyler Clevin back in the lineup, he was suspended during the NCHC tournament. With him back in the lineup, that changes the dynamic of their defense because now all of a sudden Cooper Moore and Ethan Frisch don't have to be dependent upon as much for the bigger minutes mm -hmm. so they can spare some minutes, and that's where I think North Dakota – can benefit. And Zach Driscoll has been outrageous in goal. Interesting goaltending matchup here with Matthew Glida for Notre Dame. Yeah. Transferring from Cornell, as you mentioned, grad transfer. He's a terrific goaltender. Two of the better goaltenders in the tournament are playing against each other. Yeah, North Dakota, so much grit. They play like their life is on the line every game. And Notre Dame, ask Michigan how tough they've been <laughs> this year. The Irish really gave the Wolverines a hard time. We are just getting started. We're halfway done. Coming up here on this selection show special on ESPN, we'll talk with Mike Kemp. The Ice Hockey Committee Chairman, how they got to where they got. Interviews with Mel Pearson of Minnesota. Mike Hastings, a, a crazy game in the CCHA. We'll get his view on that. They're all playing for that. The Frozen Four this year in the great hockey city of Boston, Massachusetts. Eight more teams to go. Four more matchups after this. Eight down, eight to go. Ah, Denver, the Sunshine State. Gorgeous. <laughs> Pioneers, sure. as you can see, they're the one seed there. They'll play UMass Lowell, ESPNU. Uh, Dan Kelly, the play by play out there in Loveland for us. Uh, the Pioneers, uh, they were one for a while. They're, they can go. They can fly. They got a lot of talent. Obviously, Bobby Brink, the leading goal scorer in the country. But a nice treat for UMass Lowell to head out west to play Denver in Loveland. And the next game day, Starman, is. Minnesota Duluth are getting very dangerous. They're starting to peak at the right time, aren't they? Well, everybody told me I was nuts in the middle of the season when I said, watch out for UMD, they're not done yet. That's another team that had to get healthy. That's another team that had to pull it together. Last four games, they've been really good. This team, we all know, they've got experience, right? Mm -hmm. They've got a goalie, they've yep. got experience. They're good on the back end. They're really solid down the middle. Face-offs are a bit of a challenge for them. But other than that, they come at you in waves. They manage games. They play 60. They take away time and space. They're big. They're heavy. They're nasty. And they've just got this demeanor about them. Oh, like, yeah. it just doesn't bother them. Mm, absolutely. They got the formula. Repeat. Rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. Sam gets them going. That's it. Meanwhile, uh, last bracket to go. That's where I'll be with Barry Melrose and Colby Cohen, Worcester. And Western Michigan, W's for Western and Worcester. They got Northeastern, so there should be some Husky fans there. Come on, Dog Pond, let's hear ya. Uh, the, the Huskies get in. They had to kind of bite the nails last night, making sure they got into the tournament. And the other matchup, I love this matchup. Yep. It's right in line with that Notre Dame-North Dakota matchup uh, in Worcester at 6 o'clock Eastern. I mean, Minnesota, Massachusetts. Good, good matchup. And Coach Carville's team? They're starting to get together, aren't they? They're healthy. They're going. Bobby Trevino, again, last night, a great performance. To me, that's the kind of game where he could really shine and be a difference maker down low in the dirty areas for UMass. Yeah, that's what I like about the kid. For, he's got skill. We all love skill guys, right? But skill guys that can play in the soup and play dirty and get greasy, like those are the guys that can really drive your engine. When I, mm. when I talked to the UMass guys this morning, the, the component that I found with them was their best players played their best in that game last night. That was something that all season long has been a little up and down. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of this time of year, the teams that tend to find consistency in these last two to three weeks, those are the teams that tend to bring it straight through into the national tournament. They got a blue liner, Scott Morrow, can move the puck up the ice oh, as awesome. good as any defenseman in the country. And this team has a pedigree now in the tournament since Greg Carville's gotten in the tournament where they have success, much like Sanders. Mm -hmm. yep. And of course, the Gophers are an excellent team. They yep. could easily go on to win a national championship. Really, really strong. So here we are, tournament bid by conference. Again, the mighty NCHC brings five to the party. Big Ten Hockey East, three each. So the field of 16 is set. Let's bring in Mike Kemp, the chairman of the Men's Ice Hockey Committee. And Mike, boy, you had a tough task last year under the circumstances to come up with a field of 16. A lot of drama. Didn't seem like as much this year. Uh, what was the biggest challenge for you all to uh, put the field of 16 together and who plays whom? I think there were two, two issues that were involved. One was the selection of what region to put people in. That's always going to be a, a, a challenge as you try to figure out where the best draws are going to be. But then secondly, I think the other issue was uh, we did end up having a, a matchup of conference opponents. And of course, in our criteria, we try to avoid any matchups of conference opponents. So we had to make a switch there with the... Uh, uh, nine and ten seeds 
uh, to, to avoid a matchup of conference opponents in the first round. And in terms of any kind of, uh, you know, kind of gnashing your teeth on, on, the, on the final bracket, what it looked like, besides that, anything else came to mind? Well, it was great fortune this year because we were in a situation where we were going by the numbers, which we didn't have that luxury a year ago. And the numbers really came out uh, fairly direct for us. We really didn't have to do a lot of adjusting. Uh, they were uh, 1 to 16, and it, it worked out quite well. I think some people still aren't quite aware yet, Mike, that there will be a day off between uh, the two games over the weekends in the four regions. Explain to our viewers again why that came to be. Well, it was in a situation with, you know, where, where the coaches for the longest time have asked for that day of rest between the semifinal and final of each region. I, you know, I think it becomes a, a disadvantage of the team that plays the late game uh, on any given uh, semifinal round, having to go into that final of the region. And I think that uh, we felt.